inside, I feel like I'm dying. My doctors can't explain it. I've been into the hospitals with it. Even though physically I look absolutely fine, I feel like I'm the walking dead. The doctor the other day said they've never seen anybody like me. I am scared of what could happen because I don't have answers. Chloe and Sue are medical orphans chronically ill patients searching for diagnosis. Patients who are medical orphans can't be treated in the hospitals and there is no answer from the specialists. The symptoms that they're experiencing are real and distressing but the medical profession can't offer them a reason or a rationale. Dr Louise Stone is one of Australia's leading medical educators. She's spent the past 10 years researching medical orphan cases. Some patients have a medically unexplained symptom that comes and goes and is irrelevant. But for patients with the long-term issues, incidents can be as high as one in three. When people have many different symptoms in many different parts of the body, it's more likely that there's a disturbance in the regulatory system run by the brain than actually a specific problem in any one of those systems. The reality is that modern medicine is filled with cases like this. Just point where the pain is. Right are. here. From the year 2000 right up until now, I've been ill with fatigue, nausea, ice pick headaches, blurred vision, I get lesions on my body, I get rashes, I have ongoing seizures. Over the years I've seen at least 35 plus doctors, I've lost count now, with no answer. Sue loves her job as a hairstylist, but is no longer fit for work. Despite no history of mental illness, some doctors put her symptoms down to a psychological problem, suggesting it's all in the mind. In my opinion, Susan is medically unwell and it's not in her mind. Back, straight. Dr Belinda Coit has been awarded a Pride of Australia medal for her work with complex patients. She's currently investigating more than 80 cases. Often other family members have much the same problem. Sue's sister, also a medical orphan, suffered from almost identical illness. She went from doctor to doctor for 10 years and still didn't get a diagnosis. On the 1st of April 2011, she took her own life. She just lost her struggle with it. It was really difficult. Sue says her sister developed depression as a result of her unexplainable physical symptoms. The police found this note in the hotel room. It says here, I'm sick, bladder and bowels don't work. I can't cope with another 10 to 12 years of illness. I feel alone and tired and fear the future. Sorry, everyone. So that's it. Some of the most common medically unexplained physical symptoms, or MUPs, are musculoskeletal complaints, abdominal and chest pain, gastrointestinal problems, fatigue, numbness, dizziness and seizures. Patients who are medical orphans are not only medically isolated, they're often socially isolated because the first reaction when, when you're sick and someone meets you is to say, what's wrong with you? And if you don't have the words, it's very difficult to interact. If you have a diagnosis, you have a place where you belong. So some patients disengage altogether from the medical system because they can't bear to keep coming into a system that invalidates their pain, and that's an awful place to be. Chloe is 20. She's suffering from crippling seizures. She can't eat solid foods and has severe chemical allergies. Her symptoms remain undiagnosed. I can have four seizures a day, which is a fairly common thing for me usually happens and I can be fatigued all day and that's a normal day for me. Do you want to grab some? Mm -hmm. Our first visit to the doctor was our local doctor. She ran blood tests, she ordered a CT scan and an MRI scan and she sent her to a neurologist. The scan and the MRI came back normal so the doctor suggested seeing a psychologist. The doctor was inferring that it was all in her head Chloe's mother, Beth, was a nurse for 12 years. 
she hasn't taken Chloe to see a mental health professional and is convinced her daughter's physical symptoms will only get worse. So one of the problems in medicine is often looking for simplistic explanations in one organ or in one place when there's actually a disturbance of one of the central regulatory systems giving rise to many symptoms that are real and persisting and disabling. And the system that lies at the heart of much of that regulation is the brain. Apart from the suffering of patients, medically unexplained symptoms create huge financial burden. It's estimated the added cost to our healthcare system and economy can be up to $18,000 a person. Often they'll have more and more tests to try and solve the problem that apparently can't be solved. They'll see more and more practitioners because they're more and more unhappy. We also know they'll spend more and more money on alternative tests, on poorly validated tests, on complementary medicine, on anything that might help. So there's cost to the direct healthcare system, there's cost to the indirect healthcare system, there's cost to the person, and because of the degree of disability, there's cost to society. I've got so much to live for. I would rather be out there working and making a contribution in the world than sitting back and watching everyone else do it. If I have a diagnosis, then I have direction. I, I would possibly know what my life will be like. I think what we're doing with medically unexplained symptoms is coping with something that we can't cure. And we can't treat everybody all of the time. But we certainly shouldn't write off a group of patients just because we can't find a name for their illness.